12 ans, on n'a jamais vu une situation comme celle-ci euh, en termes inflationnistes. Donc l'inflation en soi, ce n'est pas forcément mauvais, ça dépend finalement euh, de la comparaison avec, euh, avec les salaires. Cette année, tout augmente. Le prix des matières, le prix du transport, le prix de l'énergie, le prix des emballages, le prix des consommables. L'inflation, ce n'est pas la cause du problème, c'est un symptôme du problème. Hello and welcome to France in Focus. This week, we're focusing on inflation. At moderate levels, it's a sign of a healthy, growing economy. But when prices spiral out of control, it can quickly become a problem for both consumers and governments. For years, inflation rates in developed nations have largely stayed under targets despite economic growth. But the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the equation. Here in France, the annual consumer inflation index is at 3.4%, a 13-year high, driven largely by skyrocketing energy costs. Fuel prices at French pumps are at an all-time record high. Well, with energy prices wreaking havoc on French budgets, many households are changing their habits. Caroline Robin works for the Board of Education in Poitiers. These days, she gets up early to take the train. She used to drive to work until gas prices started soaring. Because of the price and also the wear on the car when you have to go over 50 kilometers is the obvious choice. For those living in the countryside who can't get by entirely without a car, trips are now limited to the essential. Before, I'd drive out to different places to go for walks, but now I don't even go walk alongside a pond or go fishing. Recreational activities have also taken a blow in cities. Parisians say they're spending more and more time counting their pennies. We go out to restaurants less, we do less. Otherwise, it's really tough at the end of the month. We do things that are free, like taking walks instead of going to restaurants or amusement parks, which we don't do anymore. In this northeastern town, residents are offered cards charged with 30 euros to help pay for gas, a measure that's much appreciated. I'm a home care assistant, so I use lots of gas every month, over 200 euros, so this is going to help. The local government approved the measure unanimously for all residents, regardless of income. It cost us 1,500 euros, a little over 1% of our operating budget, but we haven't had a ceremony in two years, so we were able to use that budget for something else. In this restaurant in the Dordogne, the owner gave a 100 euro bonus to all of his employees. It comes on top of the 100 euro inflation bonus the government promised to some 38 million workers. Et le Royal, voici, vous voulez du pain? A salary comes with payroll taxes. A bonus like the one we gave is without these charges. It's different. It's twice as much. When you pay 100 euros in salary, you're paying 100 euros more in tax. But for many employees, a bonus isn't going to cut it. These workers outside of Bordeaux are striking for higher salaries. Their last pay raise was just 1.8% about 32 euros a month after taxes. Most employees want a higher fixed salary, to save for retirement, to take out loans, things like that. In 2022, salaries in France are expected to rise between 2 and 3 percent, though it's unclear if that will be enough to make up for ongoing inflation. For some insight on just how inflation is impacting French society, we're joined here by Sandra Huymien. She directs the Society Division at the Center for Research and Study of Living Standards here in France. Thanks so much for being with us. So when we talk about the recent bout of inflation in Western economies, some of the biggest factors in that uh, inflation are fuel, uh, housing, and food. How does this affect different sectors of society differently? Who's bearing the brunt of inflation here in France? 
Alors les ménages qui sont le plus touchés par par the households that are most affected by inflation are low income households because they spend more on energy as a proportion of their budget. So the households most affected today are those in rural areas or on the outskirts of town who depend on their car. It's also poor households, among them single people, young people and single parent households who have to support a family with one income. And this is on top of extremely high house prices, among the highest in Europe. So why are we seeing such high inflation in the energy sector and what might the effects of that be uh, with regards to continuing high energy prices? The cyclical explanation is that with the economy recovering following the COVID crisis, everyone is starting to buy and consume at the same time, and so there's a lot of demand and not enough supply yet. And then there are slightly more long-term explanations around climate change, because we're trying to draw up a path which reduces the consumption of coal and other products that have a strong environmental impact. And China and Germany are starting to try to replace coal with gas, and so this is increasing prices. Here in France, the government has floated some proposals for how to soften the blow of inflation, particularly for low-income households, things like energy checks, tax breaks on fuel. In your opinion, is that going to work, and what should the government be doing in this case? The government is fearful of social movements, as energy prices are at the same level as 2018 when the Yellow Vest movement began in France. The problem it faces is that these price rises are likely to last, in particular energy prices. So alongside this short-term aid, it has become increasingly urgent to work on more structural aspects, i.e. why households live far from their workplaces, because property prices are very, very high, and so they are forced to move further out. And also, why do they drive? Well, because the infrastructure is not up to the task of meeting people's transport needs. Inflation has a tendency to very quickly become a political issue. Here in France, we're heading into presidential campaign season. Uh, how do you think that this recent bout of price rises is going to affect the presidential campaign? When we talk about purchasing power or inflation, we're also talking about salaries, which is also about our quality of life at the end of the day. But let's look at things a little differently. To give you a rather striking figure from the Credoc surveys, during the lockdown, the feeling of financial restraint dropped drastically, i.e. normally 60% of French people will declare that they have had to tighten their belts that they cannot afford everything that they want. But during the first lockdown, that dropped to 40%, including among the poorest households. This also shows that when lifestyles are relatively homogenous, when we're not, for example, seeing on TV the interiors of houses with swimming pools, which makes us think that we're not living a decent life, when there's a kind of homogeneity among the population, then there's less of a feeling of financial restriction. So there are different types of levers that we can intervene on, such as prices and salaries, but also what kind of consumption norms and what sort of image of a desirable life we wish to project. Sandra Hoibian, uh, Director of the Society Division of the Research Center for the Study and Observation of Living Standards here in France. Thanks so much for being with us. Merci à vous. With discontent rising alongside prices, supermarket chains here in France are seeking to cast themselves as defenders of consumer purchasing power, with mixed results. French chain Leclerc recently saw its efforts backfire when a promise to keep its price on the iconic French baguette at just 29 euro cents each sparked outrage from artisanal bakers and farmers. The controversy has helped to shine a light on cutthroat procurement practices at the country's largest grocery chains, in which farmers and producers are often squeezed to the point of losing money on their goods. A 29 euro cent baguette that's prompting a heated debate. On one side, supermarkets are seeking to maintain customer loyalty by keeping prices as low as possible. It's a symbolic product, a marker of inflation. 
On the other, farmers are fed up with a PR campaign that they believe destroys value. We can't keep telling consumers there's no cost to food. By putting products on offer, you undermine the true value of the produce. We're more in favor of setting prices in advance that actually reflect our production costs. We can't keep asking producers to shoulder the costs, as has too often been the case in recent years. Agricultural producer prices are decided during annual trade negotiations, a head-to-head -head between suppliers and retailers, from multinationals to small and medium-sized companies. It's a tough okay. battle Merci. for small businesses like Alexi Valiance. It's hard to have your prices and your range of products back on the line every year. I often say that it's as if you had to go and renegotiate your salary every year, but down rather than up. But for the business owner, there's no room for grumbling, even if this year's negotiations promise to be particularly tense. I think that in 12 years we have never seen a situation like this in terms of inflation. Everything is going up this year. The price of raw materials, of transport, of energy, of packaging, of consumables. So it's obviously extremely challenging for all suppliers and small businesses in the agri-food market. So how to reflect this increase in costs without putting up food prices? It's not possible, according to producers. Supermarkets have to reduce their margins. But consumers also have to agree to pay a fair price. The primary responsibility for this situation lies with consumers, with us. By choosing one shop over another, consumers put a lot of pressure on retailers. For proof, you only have to look at last year, when the two brands that gained the most market share were Leclerc and Lidl. French consumers are increasingly attracted to low-cost retailers, a trend that's likely to grow with inflation and the ensuing impact on people's spending power. That's it for this week's edition of France in Focus. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.